So what's up y'all, Coach here, and I'm coming to you with another Dead Zone video. What I'm going to do is, um, a, a f about a month ago, I did an update about the beta rules that came out. So I was play testing some of the rules, I, uh, Mantic sent me the rules, and we were play testing them, but then they released uh, public beta to the, to the public, and it was just chock full of rules and stuff. And then there was a few other rules that came out. So now we're on 1.5. If you don't have it, uh, you got to go get to check it out. Go to either the Kickstarter or the Mantic page and get 1.5. But what happens is, is there's a lot of changes. So when I made the video, I think it was 1.3. But now we're at 1.5. So we actually have two iterations that came out. And, uh, you know, we, we've been play testing and whatnot. So what I want to do with this is if you didn't see the other video, there's a lot of, it's just chock full of information. I went through it with a fine tooth comb. So if you haven't seen that, you should go back and check that out. But if you have seen it, then we're going to move on. Okay. So what we're going to do is just going to kind of, I just want to go over the changes and all the good new stuff that come out, that came out, not, uh, not, not belaboring the point of going over everything over and over again. So here we go. Building your own strike team. There's nothing different. It's all the same. The only difference is when, um, when you take you can take a character okay and they came out with all the character rules we're going to cover that later but you can take a character that goes into you can take a merc a mercenary or whatever that goes into that um into your strikes force so i'm going to read it to you here in addition you may take a character one one character model character models also known as mercenaries will have a list of factions that they will and will not work for included in their profile future dead zone supplements will include rules for using characters character models as a strike team leader so that so what Mantic was saying a while ago and, and actually Ronnie said it when we were at Adepticon he said that the um, the, the the mercs or whatever you could take them as leaders but then they're gonna have special um, abilities with them so that's gonna be very cool what happens is you can take let's say Sergeant Howlett or you could take Recon for the enforcers and he's gonna bring special things to the to, to the table and certain abilities. What's nice about that is they actually have Tactician 1, Tactician 2, so you can take them as leaders, but um, th that's not coming out yet. So what I'm thinking is, is in Mantic's mind is, let's say we come out with a leader and maybe a few models that he comes with or some special characters that he comes with or whatnot, and they'll release that with the rules. And that's kind of cool. That'll be kind of a cool little expansion. So you get, you get the box, you paint them up and you get them going and it could, it could work out pretty good but we already have the rules for that so right now they're just straight up mercenaries okay um, okay so now the thing is not changed you can add weapons you can upgrade weapons but the thing is what they did was what they did was they changed the um, what the weapons are so when we got the first thing and some of you guys online were going insane and it, it, you didn't have to because they threw it out there for us to play with, and then now that we've play tested and stuff, you can start to see where it comes from. But there is no way that a Z, the little Z, the smallest model in the game, was going to be able to take a Genlin 88 gun, the gun that the, the, the Enforcer Strider has. It just didn't make sense. And so now what they did was with the weapons, they put them into categories. So let's say an assault, a, assault Enforcer. He can take a light melee weapon a light assault weapon and a deployable weapon okay so now if you have an assault weapon a light assault weapon and you see there's five or six different ones you could choose one of them makes sense right so let's say he has a wrist blade which he comes with stock and you don't want that you want to give him one of the uh, energy gauntlets okay you switch it up because he can do it. it's the same category but if, it, if you want to take a sniper rifle as an assault enforcer you can't okay you, you understand so it doesn't make sense if he's an assault enforcer you can't take a sniper rifle, but you can take a sniper rifle with the regular enforcer and you know enforcer specialist. Those are the guys who really get it. We're going to get into that when we get into the characters. Uh, we get into the, the faction breakdowns, but that's about it. All right. The striders have hard points. Okay. If you have two hard points, you can take two weapons. So let's say melee weapon and the other weapon, which we all know, the flamer and the chainsaw, um, the iron ancestor. He can take a hammer, and he can take uh, a rifle, a gun, whatever, like like that. Okay, uh, the plague, same thing. The reb, same thing, like that. So um, the Assyrians don't have a strider yet. So that's the hard points of there, 
and it's good. And the victory points, the more, the better the weapon is, the more victory points it is, it adds to it. So if you take a guy that's worth two points, you get a really good weapon that's worth another point. He's worth three points. That's going to go into the total. So if you do kill that model, that model will be worth three points instead of two because of the weapon. So that's basically it. But I really like that. That you know the flavor of Dead Zone putting characters in. Now one of the betas we had we were able to bring characters in and it had some rules for them and we had the points course for them so it was cool bringing in i was i was taking recon with my enforcers and they had the tag special rule and he has a tag rifle and he was just killing people killing people it was, it was really awesome then in this the, the latest beta um we didn't have that but now in the 1.5 you can take them uh and also take the forward observer or you can take a specialist so it's really cool i really like that aspect of it you know being able to take an army and a special character or a named character so it's it's very flavorful very cool very unique so i really like that so those are the only changes to the force orb everything else the same shoot fight all that stuff level above all that stuff is the same so let's not belabor the point like i said go to the other video that I did about the uh, uh, overview, and that'll go into everything. So, moving on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to get into is the abilities. Okay, so now we have a bunch of new abilities, and we have abilities that have been explained better. They've gone over it, and, and, and it helped it out. So, um, like I said, I'm not going to go over the, the ones I already went over, but we're going to go into the new ones that came out. Okay, one of the first ones is covering fire model gains plus one dice when firing for effect with a rapid with a rapid fire weapon basically it's the same as the last edition when you were blazing away if you had um a, a, a gun with weight of fire you would be able to shoot it you'd get a plus one for blazing away so basically you get a plus plus one for um firing for effect so basically blazing at the tube uh blazing at uh, at the model okay dead eye brand new N never had this before. The model increases the range stat of any range weapon by one. Range F weapons are unaffected. So basically, if you have, if you're a dead eye, you get to shoot one extra cube. That's pretty good if you have a range two or range three weapon, getting it longer. Sniper rifles and stuff. Usually, the the the, the I'd say I'd say the medium range is six six cubes. But if you could shoot seven, that would give you one back. You'd be out of range for a while. That's actually a really, really cool ability. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, new one here, we got fire control. Okay, when a model takes a shoot action, it can shoot two weapons instead of one. Each weapon may choose the same or different target. Declare the targets of both weapons before rolling any attack dice. That is awesome. Fire, firing at uh, two different targets. You can use the two different guns if you want to use your sniper rifle, if you want to use your pistol. Um, you know, with a grenade, whatever. That is awesome. That is so good. All right. Uh, Frenzy was changed. Now, if you watch my other video, you saw I got really, really excited. So what they did was they changed Frenzy to Frenzy with a number or, you know, number in parentheses. Whatever that number is, you can reroll that one dice, that two dice, that three dice. Um, if you have a character or a model that has Frenzy as an ability and then you pick up a weapon that has Frenzy also, it, it stacks. So if you have, say, your, your model's ability or the character's ability is a, is a Frenzy 1, and you give them a weapon that's Frenzy 1, then you're actually a Frenzy 2. So it, it, it builds on itself. It's cumulative. I like it. It's not as good, but I think um, we were discussing on the Dead Zone podcast that Frenzy 2 should should be good. If you're an assault guy or something like that, I feel that Frenzy 2 should be kind of where you need to be, where it's at. But uh, right now, it's not bad. You reroll one dice. Okay, you know we'll take it. We're not gonna we're not gonna turn it down. So if you get to reroll, anytime you get to reroll misses, reroll dice. It's it's uh, it's what you need. It's it's you know it's a dice game, and you're trying to change the outcome of the dice, so it works out good. Here's a brand new rule: invigorate weapons with this ability will deliver a jolt of energy to the targets, whether through a cocktail of combat drugs, through psychic unleashing of soulless hidden potential. Weapons with invigorate make target friendly units. This unit in the same cube as the active model. When firing models, roll three dice, shoot test with, right? Got to get two successes. With no modifiers. If successful, the target model removes an activation token. That is crazy. That is crazy. So if you have been activated and you get hit with an invigorate weapon and it's, it's positive, it goes off, you get those two dice at a three dice shoot test, you can remove your activation and you can go 
Maybe you get two or three weapons with, with Invigorate, and you can get two or three guys going again. That's pretty good. That, that's nice. Um, right now, there's not too much of that out there. That seems like an OP ability, but it's 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 in there somewhere. So we're going to find it. We're going to use it. Okay. All right. Life support. Last beta, last video I did, life support was not in it. Life support is back in it. Yes, for my boys, my Forge Fathers. Um, individual has been built in automated life support system designed to keep them alive, even when gravely wounded. If life if the model is injured and killed, let's get into it. I'm not going to read it. Here we go. You get wounded. Okay. You roll life support. If life support goes through, you get to take away that wound. So if you're a two wound model and you have one wound, you get it away. Now, say you get hit, boom, 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 boom. You're a two wound model. You have three wounds. You are dead. You're gone. You can't come back. Life support. So this is almost like a free wound. You know, so you can just kind of you heal yourself. It's a free meta pack. So instead of getting a meta pack, you get it. The uh, the enforcer forge guard have it. But the, the horse car with Forge Guard armor doesn't have it, which to me astounds me. I think that's an oversight, but we're going to play with it because if he has the Forge Guard armor, it's got to have life support. It's just the way it is. It just it comes standard. It comes stock, man. It comes with CD player. It comes with Bluetooth, and it comes with life support. It's just the way it is, all right? That's the way it goes. New rule. Logistics. If a model is the leader of your strike team, you may move one item, one cube, after resolving any recon dice effects. And prior to the first turn, you may not move... The item into any player's deployment zone. So you can move an item closer to you. You can move an item further away. Maybe booby trap it or whatever. I like that. It's not bad. It's okay. It's pretty cool. You know, a little flavorful for dead zone. Um, they put back in Psychic because I guess the, the Chovar Psyker is back in there. I don't know, dead zone. I'm not even going to go over it because honestly, I, I don't even... It's, it just it seems like a waste. Okay? I know what you're trying to do. I know you're trying to, um, Kings of War has magic, uh, you know, and abilities and stuff, and, and other war games have psychic abilities and psychers, or, 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 you know, I guess in sci-fi, it's not magic, it's psychic abilities, you know, psi, psi, using the mind, psi attacks, kind of, kind of stuff like that. The, the thing is, is that what do we do with this? It's just, it's hard, man. Uh, the only exception is Psychic Weapon does not need line of sight to the target. That's good. I mean, if you can affect something in the range, whatever. But we got to test it out. I'm not going to pass judgment on it, but I've never used it because I just don't I don't see the use of it. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. I mean, we're here to try things out. Okay. Uh, new rule, Rapid Fire. Okay, Rapid Fire. A model using a weapon with a Rapid Fire special move may elect to fire for effect when making a shooting action. Okay, so when you have your gun, you're going to say, I'm going to shoot him outright or I'm going to shoot him for effect. Basically, using the rapid fire, you get it, you get it, it's either automatic or, you know, semi-automatic. The thing is, when you do rapid fire, you fire for effect, uh, you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get to pin the model. Okay, basically, that's what firing for effect is. But the thing is now, in the in the last edition, not 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 the betas, but in last edition, you have a guy with the, the you know with this rule, rapid fire. Okay, you're gonna shoot at someone. I'm gonna say to him, okay, I'm gonna shoot at him. I shoot him. I wound him. Okay, so now I got a second action. I haven't moved, so I'm gonna use a second action. All right, well now I'm gonna blaze away at him. So you would shoot him, maybe cause a wound, or if you didn't cause a wound, or you did cause a wound, you could blaze away at him and maybe pin him or suppress him. Now you have to say, I'm gonna shoot. I'm going to shoot him straight, outright, just shoot him with semi-automatic, or I'm going to go full automatic, and I'm going to shoot, uh, I'm going to fire for effect, but you can only choose one. I like that. I like that, because in the old edition, you would shoot and then blaze away, or blaze away, then shoot. Now it's like you got to make a choice. I got one shooting attack. I could move, I could shoot, I could do whatever, and then I have one shooting attack. I'm either firing for effect, or I'm just firing straight up. Okay, I like that. That's a good little rule change, good little dynamic to it. I think I, I, think I really like that a lot. Okay, so Scout is is still here. It was in the old one, but now it's uh, it's back in, in here again. But it's different. Okay, before what happened was there was four different deployment zones. And if you had the main you had the main rule book, you'd open it up, there's four deployment zones, then they would have a gray area. And out of that gray area you can scout guys. So you could put guys on the second floor, or whatever. You can scout some uh, like in the enforcer would scout pathfinders. So you'd go out there, you'd be able to shoot. 
Now what happens is, is you get a free sprint action. And I like that. And I'll tell you why. Think about it, right? The old way, you just put guys in certain areas. Is, you know, you can put them in uh, um, maybe on second level, third level, whatever it is. Now, you can sprint the guys up. So if you start one cube, he comes up two or, you know, he'll be three cubes away, you know, out of the deployment itself. Here's the thing. Um, you can put them wherever you want, but some models have a two, three, maybe even a four uh, scout action. So if they have scout and their sprint is three cubes, you're already in the middle of the board. You might be on the objective already. You might be uncovering something. You might be ready to go to combat first round. That's crazy. That's really good. Get that. Get a free move action or whatever if you can. Uh, after you scout them up, there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is you can't, uh, you can't, enter a cube with another model during this pre-development. So basically, you can't scout and free sprint the guy into a cube and then attack somebody. You just can't. You're not allowed to. So I'm assuming that if someone's in that cube and you sprint up, you can't sprint up further than that cube. So you're basically going to shoot each other. And then whoever has initiative is going to kind of come in and, and uh, be able to do that. Okay? New rule. Strategist. All right. Now, we've been looking at strategist and tactician. I thought they were taking strategist out. I thought it was it was just being taken out because it was too much. Tactician is plus one. Uh, uh, um, the other one is plus two. It was, it, was, it was hard to remember. But here, if this model is the leader of the strike team, you may re-roll one failed dice in the recontest. All right. So at the beginning of the test, you could re-roll re a recontest. That's pretty good. If he's a strategist. You can re-roll one of your things. So say you tie up and you want to re-roll at the beginning for initiative. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, stun is in here. Now, in the last beta, we had stun grenades. But right now, a weapon with this ability does not cause damage. If the weapon scores any potential damage, the target model is marked as activated. That is dirty, ladies and gentlemen. Dirty. That is a dirty, but I love it. That's good stuff. And now, not only grenades have it, but the, uh, there's some weapons that have it. So you get a little bit more variety. That's pretty cool. I, I, I kind of dig that. That's, uh, that's really, 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 really cool. There you go. All right, Weight of Fire. Weight of Fire is the same as Frenzy. All right, It Burns, Frenzy, Weight of Fire, my three favorite rules in the last video. This video, I don't know, but Weight of Fire is just like Frenzy. You get to reroll one dice, all right? You get to reroll one, one dice. If your model has the ability way to fire, and then you get a model that has way to fire, whatever is in the parentheses, you add them together as cumulative, so it's not bad. If a weapon has a plus two way to fire, and your model has a plus one way to fire, and you're getting you're rolling three dice, not bad. Could work, could work, could work. So it's not a bad list, and like I said, in the dice game, re-rolling dice is always good. Rerolling misses is always good. So basically, that's all the changes to the abilities, okay? Positive stuff. They, they've gone over it. They've clarified a lot of stuff, and I think it's really, really positive. So uh, um, thumbs up to Mantic, thumbs up to Jake and Ronnie. It's pretty good so far. Okay, let's get into the changes to weapons, all right? Now, first things first, I want to show you. See this guy here? I don't know if you can see him. Okay, that is a plague with an experimental weapon. I don't even know the name of the weapon. I don't know what it does. I've had this model. I love this model. I haven't even painted it, but I love this model. I've been wanting to paint it, but I wasn't going to paint it because, hey, not going to use it in the game, right? What am I going to do? We got rules for experimental. Finally, finally, the weapon is an unstable prototype. As no, as such, no one is quite sure what it will do when they pull triggers pull. When the weapon is used to make a shoot action, roll a dice and apply the list listed ability to the attack. So basically, you roll a dice and some cool stuff happens. Roll a one to two, it's blast. You roll th three to four, it's knockback. Number five to six, you get weight of fire two. Weight of fire two, that's pretty good. Wait, number seven, AP3. Our experimental weapon is AP3. Oh my God, listen to this one. You roll an eight, you get an ominous hum. The owning model gains the boom one ability until the end of the game and rolls again on this table. The effect is cumulative. The value of boom increases by one. Each time an eight is rolled. So basically, you get the boom and it keeps going, and more eights you get, it gets better. It's crazy. It's fun. Tournament wise, I'm not too sure about tournament wise. I wouldn't do it. But throwing this guy in a plague list with this crazy weapon gives you some good stuff. Hey, it's all good. Blast, knockback, way to fire, AP3, and then boom. 
All positive. I love it. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's great. Okay? Definitely going to put one of these guys in the playlist. Here we go. Hammer, hammer Fist Drop Armor. So they have uh, the... Um, the Forge Fathers have a character, the guy, uh, John Starnfeld, which sounds very similar to another guy, but it's John Starnfeld. And basically, he's got this super cool armor that comes down and drops somebody. And then if you did the Warpath Kickstarter, there's a bunch of guys with the armor. And you know what? It was one of those things. It was one of the last um, one of the last goals that I didn't think we were going to hit the, uh, the goal, but it ended up that we ended up getting a bunch of these guys, these... Uh, Hammer fist drop armor troops. So when that comes out, we'll have we have rules for the for it in Dead Zone, but right now only the one character has it. So Mono with the drop drop armor starts the battle off the table. Okay. He is called in using a special action by a model already on the table. So I guess you gotta make an action to call him in. Okay, your leader says, Alright, this action I'm gonna call in the guy with the armor. Place the hammer fist model in any empty cube on the table at the top level of that stack of cubes. The force of the model's entry may send nearby models flying. The hammer fist model rolls a 3 dice 4 plus test for the strain of the attack. Models in the old adjacent cubes must roll 3 dice survive test. Roll once for the attack and then separately for each target model. So basically the thing comes down, shh, boom, right? It's going to come down and you're going to have to roll against it. It makes like such a such a big blast, a big impact that... Uh, Nobody, you know, it, people can get hurt by it. So it's actually, that's a pretty cool rule. I can't wait to use use one of those guys. Uh, I got the model. I got him. I want to put him as a character into my Forge Father unit, see how he does, bring him in, blow some stuff up, make some guys uh, get hurt. And I like it because they're not pinned. They're actually coming down and he's like doing it. It's almost like when Iron Man or Thor comes down and he's like bang and, you know, it's a big thing like that. Like, you know, so he goes, maybe go Goku go Super Saiyan or something like that. All right. Jump packs. Jump packs are not new. They were good. They were bad. They stunk. Whatever. Here we go. Jump packs are great. Okay. Move up or down levels without needing a wall to climb on. Same. Jump over solid walls on the same level. The same. Jump over gaps in the floor up to the same level within one cube. Same. The only new thing that it was back in there is... Uh, Model equipped with a jump pack is not pinned by falling, takes no damage in falls. In addition, a model with a jump pack can, and like I just said. So, basically, you get knocked down, nothing happens. You can go up the wall, you can go over gaps, you go everything. It's a jump pack, okay? You get your Boba Fett on, going crazy like that. Um, it's basically the same, but with the, the pinning. So, they left all the, you know, the, the, uh, the walls, um, jump over the walls, or being able to go up one level. They left it out in the in the last in the, the last version, but now they put it back in, which is good. So it makes it effective, and um, yeah, really like that. Really like that a lot. Um, you know, it's, it was one of the things that the enforcers they have this uh, souped up armor that they use, and they should be able to use uh, jump pack the way it was meant to be, and just by adding uh, takes no falling damage works. I mean, I, I I said that we were playing a few times. Guy, my guy's not getting knocked, knocked off a level. And I said, why, why are they taking damage if they have a jet pack? Uh, I'm sorry, jump pack. But now, now it's in there. I guess it worked out. Okay, so the last weapon uh, that we have rules for is thermal mines. We finally have rules for them. And the only thing is, it's only one line. It says thermal mines are one use, range F, AP3 weapon. Okay, so now what does that do? Does it, like, do we leave a mine somewhere? Do we deploy a thermal mine somewhere? Somebody walks into that cube, it blows up, but AP3, and you roll three dice uh, um, attack on it, it doesn't doesn't have any stats or anything. So um, I don't know about this. I mean, once we get better stats on it, it'll be all right. This is one of the ones that are missing, so I guess it's an oversight. And that's all the abilities. I think it's good. I think it's good. I like the way they're going with it. Um, I'm really excited about the uh, the new stuff and, and the stuff they add. Okay, let's talk missions. Missions are in the book, ladies and gentlemen. They are in the building. They're finally here. <clears throat> last book, or the last one we had, we had a patrol mission. Okay, and patrol mission um, was just your standard mission. Okay, go out there and do whatever. Now, the mechanic has changed. In the old days, pull the card out. You got your mission. You didn't like it. You get another one. They had red missions and stuff like that. Um, 
the, the problem I had was this. If I pulled a card and had one mission on it, basically assassinate, kill everybody out there, my opponent grabs a card. It might have survive, it might have um, assassination, and it might have scour. Okay? And he would have three missions. He had three different ways to score. I would have one. And I had, a, I had an issue with that. So right now, everybody's even. Everybody's even. What you're going to do is you're going to roll. One to two, you get patrol. Three to four, you get breakthrough. Five to six, you get scour. Seven to eight, you get seek and destroy. So now, me and my opponent have the same mission. But there are secret missions in it. So you're going to roll for your secret mission in it. Now, it's a secret. You don't know. But say we both roll the same thing. We both have the same mission. That's okay. We're keeping it a secret from each other. Okay? VP points are in there. All that good stuff is in there. So let's, let's, let's get right into it. All right. So let's get into the missions. First one is patrol. Okay? Basically, uh, depending on the, on the points value of your strike team, 100 points is 12. 150 is 16. And... 200, 250, 300 is 20 points, victory points you need to win. In this, the core mission is basically kill an enemy model, you get his victory points. You hold the objective. At the end of the round, you count the objective points. There are one and two point objectives, so you, you get that cumulative. Collecting intel, you get one victory point for that. So you get an item, turn it over, you get the intel, you get one point. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Standard mission, it's basically your, uh, you know, pop and lock mission right there. So the secret mission for patrol is this. On a 1 to 2, it's a standard patrol mission. Okay? Nothing special. Number 3 to 4, staking a claim. Objectives earn double victory points. Model kills are worth half the normal VPs rounding down. So, you got to hold your objectives. Two point objectives are worth four. One point is worth two. But now, let's say you kill someone, and he's worth five victory points. You round down. Right? Round down. Two and a half to two. You're going to get two. It's not so good, so it's different. Okay. Then five to six is assassination. You're double victory points for killing enemy leaders. You earn zero, zero for objectives. So different mission right there. Okay. Seven and eight, lie of the land. Each friendly model that moves off the board through the enemy deployment zone earns twice their value in victory points. I hate the, the scour mission. I hate the, I mean, the infiltrate where you got to run off the board. I hate that mission. But with this one, it doubles your victory points. What are you going to do? So if you have the regular patrol, okay, with the victory points holding objectives and then moving off the board, you might be able to do it. So that is basically the patrol mission. Pretty good standard mission. Um, solid, solid, you know, a lot of fun. Okay, so the next mission is scour, okay? That's if you roll a uh, three to four, you get the scour mission. Basically, this is the one where you're going to get onto the um, you're going to get onto the dead zone board, and you're going to try to retrieve as many resources possibly before disengaging. All right, so you basically you're going to try to loot the place. Okay, victory points in this mission is gained by killing enemy models, retrieving items. One victory point for every item retrieved. Find the intel. You get two points for every intel. Two. Um, to retrieve an item, you must first pick it up from the crate, and then the model carrying it must move off the board via its own deployment zone. If an item crate contains intel, immediately gain two victory points rather than one. So basically, you got to take it, you got to get get the item, and you got to move off the board with it. You can't use it. So let's say you get some AP armor or you get a grenade, you got to stick it in your pack, and you got to run off the back of the. Uh, um, you got to use it. You got to run off the back of your deployment zone. In this game, instead of the regular eight, you're going to use twelve counters. You're going to use twelve of them. Okay. Each player uh, gains additional bonus uh, points equal to the number of items they retrieve during this mission. Okay. So that's used for your campaign. All right. Scour. Here's your secret mission. So you roll for this. On a one for two, it's your standard scour game. On a three to four, you push through. Each friendly model that moves off the board through the enemy deployment zone. Earns twice their victory points. I don't carry off the board in this manner, earn one victory point. Okay, so like I said, I didn't really like that infiltrate, but if you move up off the board, you get double your victory points plus one for having uh, an item with you. That's 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 better. I, I think that's that's a lot better for me. The mother load. Intel is worth five victory points. 
Retrieving items is worth zero victory points. So basically, you got to find that intel. So you're going to go crazy getting the intel. you got to kill the guy trying to get the intel. All right? Disrupt. Gain one additional victory point for killing an enemy model carrying an item from a crate. All right, so let's say you both have that or the guy has an item they picked up. You kill him. You're going to get an extra victory point for that. So now, if you can kill him and take it and then move off the board, you got a chance to score. So you get, let's say, two points for killing a model, one point for having that. You pick up the intel, you move off the board. You might be able to get five to ten points on that. Who knows? It depends. Okay. Um, Scour is okay. It's okay. It's not my favorite, but, you know, it, it's not too bad. Okay, let's talk breakthrough. Next mission is breakthrough. Basically, um, the deployment zone is the old dead zone. You get you get one side or one, one uh, set of cubes. I get the other side of cubes. And basically with this, you got to run off the board. This is the old infiltrate mission. Victory points in this mission are gained by killing models, uh, kill, killing enemy models, getting their victory points when you kill them. Moving off the edge of the board, victory points are gained equal the amount that a model is worth to kill. So if you run off the board, you're going to basically, if you're worth three points and you run off the board, you're worth, you get three points. Uh, here are the secret missions. One to two is always standard. It's par for the course here. Thin the ranks. Enemy specialists are worth double the normal number of victory points. That's pretty good if the guy has a bunch of specialists. Okay. Okay. Usually you want to kill them first anyway because they usually have better weapons. Uh, that's pretty good. Assassinate. Four to six. Assassinate. Enemy leader are worth double the normal number of victory points. Get a heavy duty leader. Four. Shoot him. You get eight. You kill him. It's eight. It's not bad. Headhunter, 7 to 8, Headhunter. The enemy model with the largest size is worth double the normal number of VPs. If two or more models are tied for the largest, the one that is worth the most points counts for this objective. Two or more models are tied for the largest size and point cost. The first such model kill counts for this objective. Okay, it's not too bad. Uh, you kill them. Not too crazy about this. Running off the board, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not too crazy about it. The secondary mission might help you. Killing models and assassinate headhunters. Uh, killing enemy specialists or double VPs. I don't like the running off or, or, off the table. I'm not too crazy about those missions. So um, these are the book missions. You could always come up with your own missions. You could change them up. You could make them better. Honestly, if you have a mission in your head, or you have something good for me, leave it down in the comment below. I'd love to hear for it. I'd love to play it. We'll try it out. It's not a big deal because, you know, it's all about playing the game. Okay, core mission number four, search and destroy. One of the strike teams has discovered intel about the location of a nearby threat and is seeking to eliminate it. The other strike team has not been caught off guard, however, and it prepares for a brutal fight to the death. Okay, deployment zone is the same. Basically, you get your deployment zone, your whole thing deployment zone, and I get my deployment zone, the red and blue deployment. Uh, the numbers on the map indicate where they're placing objectives during a mission. So you're going to get put three objectives out. Two one-pointers, one two-pointer. It shows you in the book, it'll show you where to put the stuff. So you get an overhead view. The guy setting up is going to put it wherever he's got to put it, all right? So when you do, when you pick a deployment zone, like obviously, if the two is closer to you, you might want to have that one. Um, the victory points are gained by killing any mo enemy models and controlling the objectives, okay? Those are how you're going to get it, all right? Standard. Here we go, secret missions for search and destroy. Number one to two is your standard, just like the other other three. Three to four is terminate. Enemy leaders are worth double the normal victory points. One victory point objectives are worth zero. Two victory point objectives are worth two. So you got some bookkeeping to do. So if you have a one point objective, you're not going to go for it. You're going to go for that second one. That's pretty cool. I like that. Take and hold. All objectives are worth two victory points. All kills are worth one victory point. Oh, my goodness. You kill a leader. Okay, you kill a leader, you're not getting any extra points for that. Nothing. It's only worth one victory point. Uh, eradicate. All objectives are worth zero. Eliminate leaders and specialists are worth double the normal victory points. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, but you're going to have to kill everybody. Hopefully, hopefully, your, <laughs> the other guy's models add up to enough, add up to at least 20 victory points. Um, if you do, uh, on that point, what I'm saying is, it sounds silly, like, oh, well, if he only has 18 victory points and I wipe him out of table, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose. No, you would win the game. The thing is, cumulatively, you want to try to win the game because you're killing the models. So you're going to, you know, 
uh, kill as many as you can and get to your victory points that you need. Let's say you're doing 200 points, 20 points, and you want to get to 20. If he only has 18 points of miles, you're going to have to eradicate everybody. You can't let somebody go. You can't pick out a, a, a target or whatever. Um, and if it's worth double the normal victory points, you know, and leaders and specialists, most likely you, you'll probably be able to add up to that big game too. You'll be able to take some stuff. Uh, you can kill a strider or whatnot. It's pretty good. So uh, those are the missions, okay? The missions, patrol, scour, breakthrough, search, and destroy. Patrol is just your base mission. I love it. My favorite. Scour, not too crazy about. Breakthrough, I'm not too crazy about. Um, I think breakthrough is a little bit better than scour. Those two, I would... You know, if, I, if we rolled for them, I'd play them, but I wouldn't be too crazy about them. Search and Destroy is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, the secret missions are good. So now you all have core objectives. You all have the same way to win, and you're doing that. Your secret missions, hey, listen, you might be running up to get the objectives. You get the objectives, and all of a sudden, you know, they're coming to get the objectives. You kind of sucker them in, and you try to wipe out everybody there because they don't know that your mission is not to, um, it's not to, hold the objectives but to kill them so you lure them in or let's say you're trying to kill 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 and then you jump up the objectives for that point and then you can move out or whatever so i like it the secret mission is is the key man that's that's pretty good um i think the missions could be better i think we can add to them but that's going to come with play testing and whatnot so like i said if you have some good ideas or you've been doing stuff running campaigns or whatever put them in below all right but all in all, I like the new missions. They're better. Like I said, I already gave you my opinion on them, but those are the missions. Okay, guys, well, that's it. So that's the updated version of the of the Dead Zone uh, beta rules that came out, 1.5. Um, I'm going to give it a big thumbs up. I got to be honest with you, a lot of you guys out there on Facebook and in and, and the comments on, on, on the Kickstarter, very harsh and I understand and I and I feel the same way when when model when the stuff came out and there was a rule I didn't like like um, frenzy came out and I loved it then they changed it to frenzy one or whatever um, I wasn't too happy about that when it burns came out I was ecstatic I thought this is the way it burns should have been this is the way we were playing it now it's been clarified and I have uh, a little vindication in myself because oh I was right you know we've been playing it the right way uh, there's a few things that are wrong but you can't go crazy and I didn't Go crazy. I'm like, let's see where this pans out. Because, like I said, I had a few of the beta versions, the uh, testing, you know, kind of secret um, that we were play testing on our own. And then we kind of moved over and we watched. And now stuff is put back in. So you give it time. And I like the way it's going. I think Dead Zone is good. I see a lot of comments like, ah, Dead Zone's gone. Dead Zone's this, that, that, that. Send me your terrain. Send me your models. I'll play the game. I like the game. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's going to be. I think it's going to be awesome. The only problem, I'm just waiting for my stuff. Once I get my stuff, we can get crazy, get going. Um, models look great and whatever. All right? Um, also, if you are watching this video, you probably know about this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to be on the Dead Zone podcast. I've been on it a few times. Jack and Rob are awesome. I love going on the show. Uh, when they have me on, I just, you know, just love being on it. We're going to discuss all the new rules and stuff. So check us out. It's going to be coming out soon uh there's going to be link to it because you know it's one thing when you hear me discuss it but then we discuss it with a few guys who uh know about the game and do what they got to do with it they um we can really get into it so just check this out but like i said if this is you're here and you're hearing this stuff for the first time and you haven't seen the other video i'd like you to go back check that out too because i really get into it and these are just kind of the addendums or the changes that they did so Thanks for sticking with me. I always love the fact that people watch these videos. It really uh, humbles me that I can uh, bring this to you guys and you guys listen to me. Uh, I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time here, why don't you check out some of our other videos. If you like this one, if this helped you, just hit that uh, like button. And if you want to see some other videos, we've got hobby videos, battle reports. We do also play other games like X-Wing, 40K, um, uh, we're going to be doing more Dead Zone Bat Reps, but we're waiting for the final rules to come out to do it. Uh, you know, just 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 gaming and hobbying, man. That's what we're all about. So, like I said, please like, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Let's play some Dead Zone.